Okay, so hello everybody. This is Mariana Smolchitz, uh, your uh, administrator of the learning event Becoming an uh, Inclusive School, but I also am a co-moderator of the eTweening Group Inclusive Education. So I say hello to uh, all of the members of the Inclusive Education Group and all of the participants of the learning event. As you have all noticed before, you've got a, a disclaimer that this session is uh, going to be recorded. So if you are not comfortable with that, you can leave and also watch the recording later on. So today is the 4th of March, uh, 6 uh, p.m. here in Croatia, as well as in Brussels. And uh, I would like to introduce my uh, second speaker or our second speaker in the uh, during the, the uh, learning event, Mr. Donald O'Reilly. Uh, who has been joining me for the second time, actually, because in 2017 he had a webinar about inclusive classroom for uh, my group. Uh, and before we start, I would like to quickly introduce uh, Donal. Uh, Donal um, is a graduate of the University of Limerick, and uh, he has developed capacity in uh, uh, career uh, in uh, early, early career to developing capacity in teachers through the engineering technology and teacher association and teacher professional network. Um, he uh, is, has also completed an MA in education and developed an interest in action research and has worked in six different post primary schools through his career across all sectors, size and demographics. Uh, Donald is now at the moment seconded to the Center for School Leadership um, uh, uh, from his uh, original uh, school where he used to work, uh, Killergon Community College. I don't know if I have pronounced that uh, correct, Donald. I, I apologize. Uh, there he served as a deputy principal and uh, principal for a combined 13 years. He has a strong focus on fostering a culture for the development of aspiring leaders within the school and building leadership capacity. Um, Donald is also very active with the European Schoolnet and the Future Classroom Lab in Brussels, delivering workshops and webinars. And he also facilitates learning events for leaders and teachers across Europe and is a guest contributor or panel discussion. Uh, as one of eight winning ambassadors and through his involvement in the Erasmus Plus program, Donald has built an extensive leadership network across Europe and has had the opportunity to explore the various leadership mentoring and coaching approaches in many European countries. So that's why I'm very happy for Donald to be here with us again, uh, to tell us more about inclusion of all stakeholders for this is something uh, he is uh, very competent in and he is going to share his experience. So Donald, uh, you can uh, start sharing your camera. I'm going to stop my camera and mute myself. Welcome one more time and so much for joining us. The microphone is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope everybody can hear me. And I will try to speak uh, slowly because um, in Ireland, and in particular the southern part of Ireland, we speak very fast. So I will, uh, I will try to slow down. I'd like to thank you for joining uh, us here this evening and uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, and I do appreciate that it is six o'clock in, uh, in most of the rest of Europe, um, but we, because we are here in, uh, South, in, in, in Ireland, it's, it's five o'clock and this was the earliest uh, that I could accommodate. So we'll get straight into it um, and I'll try and share my screen here and hope that everything goes according to plan. And I should be able to present. Right. I'm not sure. Can I can I see? Oh yes, I can see the chat. So can now you are in the presenter mode. You can keep going. Yeah, fine, great. Everything is good. Sorry. Thank you very much. Um, 
we have we have a saying for this uh, here. I'm not sure if you have it across Europe as well, but I'm now flying blind. So what I can see is um, my own screen and uh, nobody else's. So I could be talking to myself. So thank you very much. Um, what I hope to achieve over the next um, 60 minutes is to introduce you to me, even though it has been, uh, we've almost covered that. Identify um, what stakeholders are for us. Um, look at a case study, look at my school, uh, and I'll give you a little bit of a, an insight into the history of the school um, and where we were and where we came and where we continue to go. You will have an opportunity for uh, questions and answers. Um, and hopefully, what I would like and what I always like in, in webinars or workshops is that you can walk away after 60 minutes with something that you can use no matter where you are. Whether you're a teacher in the school, whether you're a, a policy maker, whether you're an administrator or, or a principal or assistant principal. So as was mentioned, that is, uh, that is my kind of my curriculum vitae as such. Um, I'm a former e training ambassador because what I, uh, when I moved positions to my current position, I just couldn't fit everything in. Um, so I've taken a bit of a, a leave of absence from that, from the formal role at the moment. But I continue to be involved in e training and the promotion of e training amongst my network. If you'd like to engage with me, um, Twitter might be the best. And my Twitter handle is down there, PDP Donal, D O N A L. So this is where we are located, um, very far down in the southwest of Ireland, in a town called Kilorglan. Famous for many reasons, but I let you uh, discover that from Google. Um, and we have our own tropical uh, weather down here because, as you can see, we get uh, we are on the Irish Wild Atlantic Way, but that brings with it the Wild Atlantic storms, and we have a very rugged coastline. Um, and on the beautiful days, it's beautiful, but on the days of storms, it is quite aggressive as well. So you are welcome to, to come to visit. And if you are in this area, please, uh, please uh, say hello. So I had, I had an introduction uh, set up, uh, but I just quickly changed it there because I, I too was wondering where you were, uh, what countries you were from. Um, just to get you warmed up, I'd like. There's been a lot of negative uh, negativity in the world this year. Um, in schools, we can think negative thoughts as well because there's lots of things wrong at the moment. But I would like to to get us into the positive mindset, and I'd like you to go to Minty uh, again, put in that code, and share with us uh, something positive that has happened to you this week, uh, this month this year, today, um, just to get your mindset and get all of us onto the, the positive mindset. Happy birthday. Um, I was going to say happy birthday, Alfonso, but it's not uh, Alfonso's birthday. Losing weight, fantastic. Congratulations. Your student learned to read. Lovely, positive vibes. They're filling me with positivity. I often buy myself presents, and it's good. It's nice. Uh, our shops are closed here in Ireland, uh, so it's nice to order something and wait for the postman or the courier to deliver it. Congratulations on receiving Erasmus accreditation. You got the vaccine. My, my parents received a vaccine this morning. Um, but it's, it's a huge positive impact. I would love to drink coffee with anybody at the moment in a, in a face to face um, setting. Hiking, favorite food, fantastic. So 
with urgent issues. Today is my parents' anniversary. Congratulations, you got a diploma. Great. Today, my uh, son was chosen as a, a virtual mascot for our our rugby club, uh, our rugby team, Munster Rugby, for tomorrow night's game. And uh, he created a video, and he's going to get a, a message from uh, the players and the coaches. So this is great. And uh, the reason I want you to do this, as I said, is to get into your positive mindset and celebrate the simple things in life and to focus on the positivity. So I will allow you to um, I'll allow you to, to continue to fill that um, if you don't mind and I will move on. Okay, so I just want to give you a brief um, explanation of, of where I have come uh, and where particularly in, in, in the school setting. Um, the latter end of 2019, 2020 and 21, I, I, I moved from school. But I just want to give you a, 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 an insight into where I'm coming from and maybe it might resonate with some of you. So in 2007, uh, I started a, as a deputy principal, uh, a deputy headmaster um, in Kilardlin. And the cartoon or the image there says it all. That's the way the school felt. That's the way the students felt. That's the way the, the, the teachers and the staff felt. It was uh, a lot of early school leavers not finishing or not completing their education. There was poor attendance. There was low progression to third level or further education. And we were, and the staff were very much, um, stuck in the traditional teaching methodologies, the old style teaching and teaching modern day students and it just didn't seem to, to match. And overall there was low self-esteem by students and staff across the board. We had no parental engagement in education. I'm not sure um, what type of parent teacher conferences or meetings you have in your countries but um, I remember in our school, we had 125 students and we held the parent teacher meeting on one evening for all of them. And I think maybe 20 came in, 20 parents. Now there are 350 students and the parent teacher meeting or seminar or discussion has to happen over five separate evenings. And the attendance would be 85 to 90% attendance. So there's a change there. And we'll explore maybe how, how we change that. There was a lack of support structures in the past. As I said, 125 students, a lack of student engagement. Students didn't want to be there. And when they were there, they didn't um, get engaged and the stakeholders, stakeholders uh, just weren't really interested, weren't interested and weren't involved. So I asked myself, um, and I think, you know, you who are involved in this learning event and who are joining us this evening or watching afterwards, um, you should ask yourself the question, is there a plan? It doesn't have to be your plan. Uh, it can be a collective plan. It may, it may take time to, to develop, but there must be a plan. Because if there isn't a plan, then it gets, it, it, it does, it, it, it's very much ad hoc. Um, when I look back, that's a mistake that we made. Uh, we had great successes, but we might have had even greater successes if we had a plan. Bear in mind, a plan doesn't have to be followed. It's just a guide. And sometimes we get caught up as well when there's a plan that we have to stick rigidly to that plan. A plan is the overall um, idea. 
but be prepared to allow that to develop and evolve over time. And those people involved in the plan must embrace change. They should be proactive. They should have an open mind. They need to be reflective. And each and every person needs to change the small things, what's in your control. And that's going back to the positive outlook that I spoke about earlier. I can think of many things that annoy me and upset me and aggravate me that I cannot change. I do not have the control to change them. So I try and put that to the side and I think about things that excite me and make me happy. But also I think about the things that I can change and are in my control. And teachers are the most powerful people, I think, in the planet. Because with small, small changes, you can have big impact. And this, the biggest oak tree always grows from a small seed. And it's your control um, as teachers and plant those seeds in your schools, in your students, and you can have you can affect change. This is something that I always heard when I came back to the school in 2007. And I started asking questions. Why? Why are we doing this? Why do you do this? Why? Not in a bad way. I just wanted to gather information. And when you ask the question, why are we doing it? Or why are we doing it this way? And the answer comes, we've always done it this way. That's not a good enough reason to continue doing it this way. So when I came across this, I paused and I said, let's reflect, let's look at it. Maybe it is the right way to do it, maybe not. Let's pause, let's look at it, let's re evaluate it, let's see if it's working. If it's working, we don't, we move on. If it's not working, we fix it. So that's where we were. And before I move on to stakeholders and just to get an idea of you know, where I will speak about our stakeholders and uh, the, the key stakeholders in our system, I'd invite you once again to go to Minty and use the new code, which is on screen. Um, and list your stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders in your school? Who are the stakeholders that you engage with? Who are the stakeholders that the school engages with? And who are the important stakeholders that should or must be included? Maybe they are included already. Maybe they're not. So go to Minty. Uh, I hope you have that code. Um, maybe the CSS can copy that code and put it into the I chat. did, I don't worry, I'm following you. Very good. I'm glad to hear a voice because I was getting lonely and I was wondering, was I on my own? So I'm gonna stop. I speaking. can be very annoying speaker. So we have shared the code and uh, you can just click on the www.menti.com and copy paste the code. I can read it out for you, 296022239, but people have already started sharing. This is uh, just as this is being populated. Um, It's great to see, obviously there are, there are many, many stakeholders um, and all are important, but all are not equal. Um, and I am delighted to see, as I expected, that the three almost equal um, stakeholders are students, parents and teachers. Um, 
And I believe that that's the way it should be. There's some duplication there. Children will come in under um, students, student uh, school council, uh, the head, the principal, the Ministry of Education, very, very important. Um, teacher is down there, so that would be, would be another one up for the local community. Very, very important. I'm going to speak about the local community um, very, very soon as well. Educational institution governors. So that's, that's what I would have expected, um, and I will be speaking in relation to that. Um, we, each, each country has a different setup for the administration. Some is local, some is national, um, but they still are stakeholders and they're very, very important. But really, uh, I think we all agree that the three most important are teachers, parents, and students. So I'd invite you to continue uh, sharing that or inputting into that while I move back to the presentation. Oh, sorry. Sorry, my apologies. I'm losing my train of thought. I'd like you to go, now you should have seen, you should have received uh, the next slide in that presentation. And it's asking you, why do we need to engage all stakeholders? I think we're all here and we agree that we do need to engage. So we've, we've that covered. So now why? And once we agree that all stakeholders should be engaged and we agree who the stakeholders are and who are the more important stakeholders, We need to agree why they need to be engaged. And then we ask how. But this is something that you can do in your own schools or in your own department or in your own communities. Because this gets consist consistent and, and, and allows people to focus on the end goal of the how. And if, if your school only agrees on two stakeholders, or one stakeholder, or five, whatever they may be, you can start at that. And back to my previous explanation, you change what's in your power, what's in your control. Let's look at what's coming in. Why do we need to engage all stakeholders? Integration, collaboration, partnership, make changes, implement them and evaluate them, communicate, collaborate, Listen to each other carefully. It can help improve education. It has to be a partnership, support and advice. We need to have it in everybody's interest. There would be need to satisfaction and needs to be more successful, to improve the quality of learning. I like this. I like this. And congratulations to the person who put this in. To improve the quality of learning. That's the focus, not to improve the quality of teaching. If you improve the quality of learning, you will be improving the quality of teaching. But the focus from that person is on learning. And I think I like that. That, that would be my focus. The focus is on the student. The focus is on learning. And everything else feeds into that. We are a community depending on each other. Communication. Collaboration comes out strong. To teach better to help everybody. So again, I invite you to continue um, filling that while I go back to the presentation. So I preempted this. And I, pre, uh, and I, I, uh, I don't know what I would have done if I didn't get those three top answers. But I suppose across the world, really, if you do a, a survey like that, you're going to get the same answers. 
And a teacher who taught with me in 2007, in that school where everybody had their heads down and uh, things were not so good, always had a very positive outlook. And he subsequently became a, a liaison person between the school and parents, which certainly helped us along our way. But he gave the analogy of the three-legged stool. And the three-legged stool cannot stand up if one of the legs is missing or if the one of the legs is broken. So we focused a lot of our time and our energy into making sure that the three legs of the stool existed, collaborated and worked together and knew what each other was doing and had a shared goal and a focus. So, remember in 2007, remember our parent-teacher meeting, remember that only 20 came in out of 125 students, so we had parent resistance. Why? Why would there be parents resisting this? They may have been an early school leaver. They may have had a bad experience in school themselves. So if I have a bad experience in a country, I may not want to go back to visit that country again. If I am a parent, I have a bad experience in school. I certainly don't want to go back into the school for any reason, particularly even maybe going back in to see the same teachers that I had who hadn't changed. Maybe I had a poor education and I'm embarrassed as a parent. Maybe I didn't have an adult to look up to inside in that school, an adult who positively influenced me. And that is something that we, we focused on with the One Good Adult program in the school. We matched all our at-risk students with a teacher or an adult in the school that they connected with, that they shared a common interest with, and they linked with them once a day, just a comment, thumbs up, are you okay? Just very, very simple, not a big conversation, not a meeting, it was just one person to connect with. Education is not a priority with many parents and many families, and we have seen this even through the pandemic. Many, many students are engaged, and parents have made it happen that they have connectivity through uh, mobile internet, they have made it happen that their, their children have, have devices to, to connect with, and many, many parents have not. Maybe the parent is intimidated by a perceived authority of the school. Maybe the young person has a special educational needs, and maybe the parent hasn't accepted it. Maybe they don't know it, or maybe they know it and they don't want to accept it. Maybe the student has undiagnosed special education needs, or maybe the parent themselves have, has undiagnosed special education needs. That is huge resistance and a lot of factors. And how do you get over that? Is it possible to get over it? I would say yes, because we got over it. And again, taking small steps. So how do we get over it? How, how do you build these bridges? How do you achieve what seems to be the impossible? We focused on having events in the school that were positive and that involved the community whenever possible. Uh, we accidentally realized one day that our school was was um, celebrating the school building was celebrating its 30th birthday so we planned a big party big party and we invited all past pupils who could contribute in any way uh, music wise um, catering wise entertainment wise and we just put on a, a party all day it started at 12 o'clock in the 
in the afternoon and it finished at 10 o'clock that night and Aaron's just brought in sandwiches and food and buns and people came home from all over Ireland to meet up with their friends and tell positive stories and again all positive events. We introduced parent teacher student meetings so rather than having the, 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 the parent meet the teacher and exchanging dialogue and, and the parent going home to the student and miscommunicating what was said or maybe focusing on what the negative rather than the positive, we had parent student teacher meetings. What we found with this was that the student went home and encouraged the parent to come to the meeting, not the other way around. We found with this though that the teachers needed support uh, and training on how to deal with this. This was new and we used the, the sandwich approach. You start with good news, you put in a slight little bit of where they can uh, improve and you finish it off with some good news as well. So another method is three stars and a wish. Three good things and here's what I'd like you to improve on for the next year. Very successful. Um, interestingly, you know, the students didn't attend all of the, the meetings. So they might have 13 teachers. They might sit with 10 and not three. And that then shows as well the, the dynamic between teacher and student. Why is that student not feel comfortable sitting uh, at the table with their parent and that teacher? And a, a, a reflective teacher will reflect on that and maybe use that to, to build a rapport with the student so that they can have a three-way three, three -way conversation. Um, facilitating families, a very, very simple, a very, very simple thing. We, again, accidentally, we accidentally discovered that some parents couldn't come to our parent-teacher meetings because they had young siblings at home that they needed to mind. We invited them in. We said, come in, bring your siblings in, and we set a room aside for those siblings to come in, to read a book, to do some homework, and just in a warm, safe environment. Now, we were thinking as well that these are our future students. So bring them in, introduce them to the school, get them familiar with their surroundings and maybe that they will come to the school uh, later. We also provided tea and coffee to all the parents who came in. Something small, but something very, very effective. We opened the school to any community group that, that, that wanted it for non-profit making um, activities. So if the local dance school uh, wanted a, a video, we allowed them to have it. If the scouting troop wanted some area, if the active retired wanted some uh, some area to use, we facilitated all that. We had a um, we have a mental health a clinic beside the school, and we offered our gardening tunnel to the people attending that clinic for certain hours of the day come into our gardening tunnel and do some gardening and therapy work. That, that expanded out then further when we actually got some of our students working with these people. We also reached out to a special school in the area and they came in and we had a lot of collaborative projects. We made sure that the school was a welcoming environment. When you come to our school, the first thing you will be asked and offered is a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. It doesn't matter if you if you are coming to discuss something serious and something potentially um, potentially where, where there could be some friction, you still get a cup of tea and a cup of coffee to start. It diffuses situations. We had a separate waiting area for parents or, or a meeting room for parents. So if a parent was coming in to speak to a principal or a teacher, 
They weren't waiting in a corridor in a common uh, a public area. They had a private area where nobody knew their business and they felt safe. We opened up all communication channels. Our first communication channel was a black and white newsletter. One page, A3, folded over. Very, very simple. That evolved into a 25 or 36 page color document over time. We set up a Facebook business page. That evolved into Instagram and Twitter. But as well as setting it up, we monitored the activity on it and we reacted to that. And what I, what I mean by that is that we found that our biggest traffic on our Facebook page was at 10 o'clock in the morning. By females aged 35 to 45 access, accessing from their mobile phones. And you can get all this data from your Facebook page. But why have we got 35 to 45 year old females predominantly accessing our page at 10 o'clock in the morning? We felt, we don't know, but we felt it was the, the, the hardworking mom after doing the, the drop off of the children and grabbing a cup of coffee in, in her relaxation mode. So that would be, the, that would indicate that they had young kids. So what we started pushing out at 10 o'clock in the morning or between 10 and 12 is we started pushing out parenting tips for toddlers, not for teenagers. Our school has teenagers, 13 years to 18 years, but we pushed out uh, parenting tips for toddlers. And that brought people into our page. It started, it got them liking and sharing, which meant that more of our posts then were reaching more people. Uh, we, we continued to monitor and we put out other communication area items subject to the people that were looking at the page at that time. When we introduced Instagram, Instagram tended to be the communication towards students. Facebook tended to be the communication towards adults or parents. And then we also developed and promoted staff attitudes to partnership. And that's kind of what I did with you earlier. You know, why should we partner with, with stakeholders? Why do we need to, parent, to partner with parents? Worked on that and agree and, and, and developed the why before we developed the how. So never underestimate the power of a cup of tea in Ireland, the power of a cup of tea and a biscuit or a cup of coffee. You know, even in the heated discussions, even in meetings that I knew were going to get heated because of a, a difference of opinions, I always made the excuse, whether I wanted one or not, I always made the excuse with a parent you know, I just need to get a cup of coffee now before this meeting. Can I get you a cup as well? You get the cup and it's, you're making a link, you're making a bond, you're building a bridge, and then you move on and you have your discussion. I always, we always did, you know, when a parent called or emailed, whether we could solve the problem or not, we always called back or emailed back to acknowledge the contact and then say that we would look into it or discuss it or arrange a meeting, but always acknowledge it. Not ringing back with the solution, but ringing back or emailing back with uh, an acknowledgement. We didn't try to make contact. When, when, when the school makes contact with parents in the past, it was bad news. What did my student do? What, what, what's wrong? So we tried to change that. And I might hear some information or we could hear about some celebration, about some, some, somebody winning a, a medal or somebody doing really, really well. And I would pick up the phone and I would just say, congratulations. 
and parents when they answer first is what's wrong and I say nothing wrong just ringing to say he's really really improved and tell him when he comes home this evening tell him that tell him that I rang to say that he's really improved and tell him keep it up and parents really really appreciated that um, because we found that when you're ringing people ringing parents they weren't answering because they recognized the number we engage students and students and, and parents uh, in conversation outside the school but not about school so I live in the community I have no problem living in the community I meet parents every day but if they start speaking about school I politely say Do you know thanks for that uh, can we can we discuss that on Monday or I'll ring you on Monday and park that address it and park it and don't ignore it or don't try to ignore them and then engage in normal conversation and after a while, uh, after a time that will become habit people will, will respect your your privacy we often brought in guest speakers on parenting and parenting tips like I said toddler tips for parents which we found very very good and we engaged with support services not only support services for us in education but support services that could support parents and that we we up op, we up op, we operated as a as a, a type of funnel we encourage parents who might be in difficulty to go to these support services we often arrange meetings between the support services and parents in our school building just to make the initial contact and break down the, the barrier because a lot of parents that need help won't ask for help. They need to be encouraged. Participation in school looks different for all families and we, we must respect that. You know, all, all teachers are different. All pupils are different, all students are different, and all families are different as well. And you must you must accept it, you must respect it, and encourage them along at their own pace. Some will move faster than others and some will take time to come, but they, they will they will all come eventually. If you recognize the power and the contribution that all parents can give, this can help them become liberated and find their voice. Uh, we worked very, very hard to, to set up a parents' council, and we made sure that it didn't become a, a place where people could just give out. It became a place where they could come together, have a discussion, identify needs, uh, bring those to the school, but also come with solutions and things that they could contribute to and it worked very very well uh, slow to get off the ground and very much dependent on the right people but again it, it, it helped again you must focus on the effort and you know the, the effort of the student and the effort of the parent they could be making a huge effort but it might only show to be very very small and you can't equate them to you because teachers have had an education they did complete school they value education but you could be dealing with parents who are on the opposite spectrum to that and for them to be stepping over that threshold of your school at all could be huge a huge huge thing so we gotta accept that So for parents and for schools and teachers and head teachers, schools must ask themselves, what is the school's attitude to parents? How can we make all parents welcome at our school? All parents, even the ones that are going to cause you difficulty, how can you make them welcome? How do you handle them? Do we value all their voices or do we only value the, the parent who is a business person in town or do we treat them all equal and how do we capture the, the student voice, the third, 
leg of the stool. And do we value that? I just I focused on parents there because I think that's that's where our biggest achievement was. You need to work with the teachers as well, parallel to that. The teachers are professional and they're much easier to if you if you explain things to them, it's much easier for to bring them along and bring them forward. The students are only delighted to be involved. And when we started including students in decision making, initially we chose all the good students. But we found that you know you're, you're choosing the good students, but that is not representative of the student community. So we had much discussion, and we had some resistance from teachers. But when we were looking for student voice and student opinions. We moved to a random selection, a random selection across the school. And I will never forget the first time we did the random selection, we picked 12 students for a focus group and for interviews. And six of them I would not have picked. And we looked at them and we said, let's, let's give this a go. And that was a turning point for our school. Because the six that we would not have picked actually contributed more to that focus group than anybody else. And they explained why they were disengaged with school. They explained why they were not happy in school. They explained what, what all of the difficulties. And for them to be even asked, they felt included. And then for us to go back and say, here is what we propose. We're doing this, this, and this. And let's see how it goes. And there's one particular person who was involved in that. And he completed school last year. And I have no doubt in my mind that he is a different person. Because of that. That was a turning point in his life. Being asked to contribute to the, to the running of the school. And being asked, what did he think? So maybe, you know, bear that in mind. And, and don't always pick the, the good students. One other thing that we did that had a huge impact is that the community, the school in the community wasn't seen, didn't have any status, and there was no links with the community. And I put in five names and logos uh, beside the, the text there. Bexco, Estellas, Lieber, Promed, and Aranova. They are international companies, all with hubs or bases in our area. So what we did is we went to them and previously schools would have gone to, to these companies looking for money, looking for sponsorship. We didn't. We went to them asking them for experience. We asked them for their time. We asked them to engage meaningfully with us. And it was the first time that schools had done that and they really liked it. It wasn't a matter it wasn't a matter of just getting the money and going. What ultimately happened was they got involved with the school and they liked what was happening so much, they ended up sponsoring at a later stage. But they sponsored into an area that they had identified as a as an area or a need that they would like to get involved in. So these are household names. And for a student to be in school and be able to reference an international company and say that the, the director, the owner, the HR manager of any of these companies was in their classroom and explaining about something or they had visited these buildings, that was, that's huge. That's huge and it, and it empowered young people. It also allowed them to, to see what employment was in their town and what they might need for further education if they wanted to come back and work in these areas. Because of our engagement with that, we, we didn't move to school awards that were sponsored by these leading businesses 
international businesses. The sponsorship of the of the prize was twenty euros, and and often we the school paid for that. It wasn't the, the money; it was time. And we, over time, we established the school awards, and ultimately, because we were doing so well, and the companies respected us so well, that we were able to get the head of the company into the school to present these awards to the students. That was huge. A company director or a company owner doesn't is difficult to get hold of and for him or her to make time and asks you to make sure that you, you give them plenty notice so that they can be there to hand over that prize is huge. Um, and it was great for staff as well because you could you can harness the, the expertise from the private sector for staff inputs as well. We built links with the local media and what we did is we learned to write uh, press releases, we learned how to write articles for papers and we gave them to the papers as a as a package. Here is the article, here are the photos and the local media loved us because on the, on the weeks where there was no news, they were able to run something for us. Or they'd ring and say, we don't have much news this, this week, have you any story? And that got us out in the community and again to parents and getting parents in the papers and publicizing our events. We celebrated every success, no matter how big or how small. In actual fact, we celebrated the smaller successes bigger than the bigger successes. And we tried to find a reason to celebrate students who are, who, who are not academic. We often had guest presenters and site visits with these major international companies. And we, because of a program that we had in school, we were able to have a link teacher that linked with these. And I, I do appreciate that that program not, might not be available to you, but if there was a teacher who would be that link teacher, uh, it would be very, very useful and it would make it easier for communication to happen. So if you want, I'm gone from the school. So I, I left the school, I, I'm, I'm seconded to our ministry. Um, and what that means is that I can be taken out of school for up to five years. I deal with supporting school leaders, from teacher leaders to middle leaders to head teachers. And I will go, go back to my school in, in uh, three years time. It's good for me, it's good, good for a, a break. And it's good for the school. The school now has new people leading it and there's young teachers coming up and it has to move on to the next level. But if you want to see evidence of what I spoke about uh, here this evening, um, you can check us out on YouTube, Calorgland CC TV. The Facebook page is very active, Calorgland CC. Very active on Instagram at Calorgland CC. Uh, and Twitter, and I, 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 I mentioned uh, Facebook and Instagram earlier. And what I didn't mention when I spoke about uh, social media is that we use Twitter to build our professional network because parents and teachers very often at that time were not on Twitter. Certainly parents weren't. We used it to engage with our ministry and other national, uh, European, eTwinning and Erasmus, uh, European School Net. We built a whole net professional network around that as well. And because we did that, and Twitter allowed us the platform to show Ireland, to show Europe, to show the world what we were doing, we built a huge network uh, and support. And when we were looking for, for support, for time, for expertise, we often put a call out on Twitter and we got support through, through that. So you can check us out. And... Uh, I hope I have uh, explained what 
what we did well. I hope you we ex, I explained the pitfalls and the mistakes that we made. Um, and I tried to keep on track, so I was I was aiming to have finished by by uh, seven o'clock on in your time. Uh, so I just invite you now to or, or later if you just take down that minty code and if you wouldn't mind giving me some feedback uh, because i am a reflective practitioner and i would like to know how you enjoy this and what i can do better next time so again if you can take that code and again maybe it might be copied into the chat and what i can do now is uh, i can thank you and i can take some questions i'm going to stop sharing the screen and if anybody Thank has you. questions, if you're not gone to sleep or if you've not gone to bed, we haven't, if you're not gone... <laughs> <laughs> we haven't gone to sleep. Uh, people have been active in the chat. Um, there weren't uh, weren't many questions in the chat. We commented on a positive and a good thing that uh, people um, got the ideas from your presentation. I was very busy on Twitter as well. If I knew, I would uh, um, tag a school as well, which I will later on. But I. Um, um tagged you on twitter and um uh, first of all thank you for your um uh, presentation which was very informative and by listening to your presentation i could identify myself even though i'm going to give you feedback on menti our school also has a facebook um website as well as um instagram profile and uh, i'm uh, administrating both and i have a co-admin uh, for facebook um just what you have mentioned it um, the community uh, it's uh, became more engaged and uh, what is interesting that uh, we have mainly parents on Facebook right while students are mainly on Instagram but they do follow what is going on because nobody knows what what are the certain students doing doing in certain activities projects and so on so they do follow it is time consuming but it's manageable and it's proactive for the school. So um, I'm going to show up myself and also I would like to ask you a few questions that, that were up, that appeared in the idea board, if that is okay, shortly. Yeah, certainly, okay. and I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to, yeah. to um, so, so one question was, maybe you have addressed it because you have uh, been a deputy, you are a deputy principal for your school, and uh, the question appeared the other day, how... Um, to have our school principals engage more into the topic of inclusion. So maybe you can explain it more further, even though I've got the idea how you could manage that, but please. It's difficult, it's difficult to bring somebody to a place that they don't want to be. <laughs> so a lot of it, a lot of it is, it, you know, it has to happen. So. In Ireland, it became, it, it, in short, it was driven by Europe. Europe, U, U, Europe wants inclusion and education policy, you know, was in, Europe encouraged the Irish ministry to embrace this and the Irish education, Department of Education, the Irish ministry uh, encouraged that and put in programs to encourage it. So that's, when, when the ministry is, 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 is driving this, the school principal, you know, has to represent the school ministry and their policies. And it, be, it, it, it came, in actual fact, it even comes down to legislation in Ireland um, now that, that, you know, you have to be inclusive. You can't, you can't uh, be not inclusive. Um, but that isn't the way to succeed because you're doing it for the wrong reasons. You know, you're doing it because you have to. And a school principal will have difficulty convincing. The, the, it, it will get diluted as you come down along then. Because the ministry says you have to do it. And then the principal says you have to do it. And down along. And it's the teacher goes to pay. You know. Whereas any successful. It has to happen from the top down. And it has to happen from the bottom up. But the bottom up is the way to be more successful so yes answer the question answer the question i'm in a school in croatia and i am passionate i'm on the learning event and i'm passionate about inclusion and i want to convince my principal you have to it's like the drip drip of a tap 
You know, when the tap drips on a block of ice, you know, the one drip won't melt the block of ice. But even if it's cold water, the drip will eventually make its way into it. So professional conversations, professional dialogue, opening the school principal's mind. School principals mostly are, are open-minded and they are passionate about education. Sometimes it gets clouded by administration. But if there is good work going, happening in a school, celebrate it, share it with your school principal, share it with them and leave it there, leave it there to, to digest and have a conversation about it over coffee and then say, you know, would you like to sit in my class for this? Would you like to see this program? Would you like to see it in action? And here's a little bit of research that I found that supports what I'm doing, that I'm not just some crazy teacher gone off on my own. I am doing this because it's good practice. I'm doing it because I love it. I'm doing it because it works. It's action research. But here is actually an academic research saying that this is good stuff. This is, this is what we should be doing. But change the small things and take yes. at any time, at any time of our careers, stop. Take a mental picture of where you are at now where you are at in your classroom, where you're at with your school, where your school principal is at, and ask yourself, are we in a better place now than we were 365 days ago? And almost inevitably, the answer will always be yes. It might be tiny, it could be huge, but the answer will be yes. And if the answer is yes, and somebody is doing the right thing. Uh, thank you. Um, I think that um, most of the uh, questions you you answered during the, your uh, talk, um, how to uh, engage students in inclusive topics, like for instance, how to engage students and uh, uh, how to engage parents and how to engage teachers. Sometimes you just mentioned even maybe the teachers could be uh, sometimes uh, they are very professional, but it takes time. And I know my pedagogy teacher usually says uh, it's uh, you have to get teachers on board, and that's a process sometimes. But um, as we discussed the other day, uh, it mustn't be only because the minister told us, because the principal told us. There, sh there should be more than that, right? And uh, we have, we, it's difficult. We have a, a, it takes time. the Center for School Leadership, we have um, recently... Uh, shared research that has been shared with us and if you want to find it uh, it's on the cslireland.ie webpage uh, under fireside chats I, I i'll be tweeting about it next week actually but it's a, a it's a dr joe o'connell and he shares very very in interesting research about the power of learning communities or communities of practice mm -hmm. and communities of practice whether they're in school or whether they're in your your um, country, or whether they're across Europe, um, they're powerful, absolutely powerful. Um, again, at a at a school level, one of the things that we found is have a have a show and tell at the school. Have a show and tell, and allow a teacher. First of all, say to a teacher, you know, you're doing great work. I like what you're doing. Would you mind sharing it? Ask them to share for five minutes. Not, 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 a, not a one hour lesson, five minutes. I guarantee you that they'll start for five minutes and 20 minutes later, you won't be able to shut them up because they love sharing. I know, I know. <laughs> we, did, we, did, we did a few uh, show and tells and they, the impact is, is phenomenal because you're showing me a strategy that you use with your students who, have, who could be in my room tomorrow. And it's not it's not Donald O'Reilly in Ireland saying he's doing this with his students and you saying, oh, no, no, the Slovenian students are way different. That wouldn't work. This is a teacher in your school saying, I'm using this and it works for me. Try it. 
Yes, and uh, in my school, we would go to monitor classes or observe what other teachers are doing. Uh, we, uh, this is what my pedagogy teacher, when we, my school is in inclusion for the past, let's say, eight years, but we started in 2011, 2012, but engaged more through regional support uh, project about inclusive education. And um, it lasted for three years and we are um, actually doing very well. Um, I must say, and especially this connection which you talked about uh, with parents. Uh, but you just mentioned, uh, Mike, the second question was, if you are doing something and you are motivational, somebody posted in, in the chat, um, if you are enthusiastic, if you are doing, if you are sharing, willing to show, and then you certainly try to have other people on board. It will take time. Don't be discouraged. They will come. Uh, and then soon... Others will, will will join, I suppose. Um, can I give one? Can I um, give one tip? Yes, please. As teachers in Ireland, and I presume all over Europe, we go in the door, and the first thing we do is we close the door. And the door is like a barrier. And when somebody opens the door, teaching stops. It's an interruption. Learning stops, and teaching stops. Mm -hmm. Don't close the door. Go into your classroom. Leave the door open. And then your colleagues will pass in the corridors. Some of them will slow down. Some of them will listen. Some will look in. And one day, somebody will either wander into your classroom and ask you, can they watch? Or they will ask you in the staff room over coffee, I noticed you were doing this with uh, the class yesterday when I passed. Can you explain to me? You have removed the barrier. You have removed the barrier of that door. And we don't need doors. So let the door open. Yes, I. we could stop here. We could definitely stop here because uh, uh, sharing good experiences. I love teach meets. Um, bringing people together uh, um, uh, as you say my experience is this is your experience the same just uh, be a good community not just for professional development but also have a good personal learning network and first start from your own school of course and um, there could be many questions Donald for you and we could go on and on and discuss and have a special inclusive education conference online but I do hope you're going to come to Croatia and we can have uh, a European conference in Croatia as soon as situation comes down. So uh, we will stop the recording now. Uh, thank you so much for